So to start, I want you guys to draw this x, y axis like this. Here's our zero degrees. This is going to be true for the whole class. Think of this x axis on the right. That's where we're going to start for all our angles. And the way it's going to work is if you rotate up first or counterclockwise, that's considered a positive rotation. If we rotate down first or clockwise, that's considered a negative rotation. So if I were to keep going in the positive direction, this would be 90, 180, 270, and 360. If you were to go to the negative direction, this would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and of course, negative 360. So let's go to our first example. It just says draw an angle, 45 degrees. So to make it easier, I'll just draw your x, y axis like this. And then you can actually use the x axis as like the first side. And then, so leave that there. And then rotate your other leg up 45 degrees. And there's your answer. So a couple of vocab words we're going to add here. This is often referred to as the fixed side. Sometimes some books call it the initial side. Essentially, we like to use X axis because it makes everything a lot easier. And then this leg right here, that's often referred to as the terminal side. So the thing of that is just a leg that's rotating. So for our next example, let's go to negative 90. So start by drawing your x, y axis again. Here's your fixed side right there. Rotate negative 90. It's going to be down first. And there's your answer. Let's go to 225. So again, here's your x, y axis. And then 225, think about that, where that would be. This is 0. 90, 180, 270. 225 should be right in the middle of quadrant 3, right there, because think of that as like 45 past 180. So that would be your 225 degrees. And the last one, 405. This one's interesting because it's clearly over 180, not 180, 360. So if you think about this, it's going to rotate one full time. And think about how much is left. If you actually were to do 405 minus 360, you get 45 degrees, which means this goes up 45 degrees more. And there's your answer. Next example. Converting from degrees to radians. So everybody highlight this word, radians. This is clearly a new vocab word. I don't think any of you have learned that yet. So I'm going to define that for you right now. So the definition is right here. A radian is the angle formed by laying one radius unit on a circle. So I'll show you that right here. I'm going to draw a circle right here for you. Let's say the center is right about here. And then here's our radius. I'm going to try to do it to scale. I'm going to grab that radius. And I'm going to say it's right about here. That would be R. This angle we just created right here. That is one radian. And just that symbol, just you know, this symbol is pronounced theta. You'll see this throughout. But again, the angle is about one radian. And if you look at this picture, this appears to be about 60 degrees. And that is actually true. So if you hopefully drew it to scale, you can see that it is about six degrees. Clearly not exactly, but it is roughly 360 degrees. 
Now the reason for that is because if you were to keep going, let's say you make six of these, notice how that would mean six radians is about 360 degrees, which means you should be able to take the radius and go around the circle six times. And you knew that from geometry, because look at this formula. Circumference is two pi r, and this number two pi is about six. So circumference is about six times the radius. So that's what we're saying here. So in short, here's a little cheat sheet. One radian is gonna be about 60 degrees. And then here's the ending. Two pi radians is exactly 360, which means one pi radian is exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so put a box around that. So that's just some concept. We're going to use some basic conversion to figure these problems out. It says convert each angle from degrees to radians. So simply take your 60 degrees. The one we use the most is going to be right here. So you guys can highlight this middle one right there. So you just write 60 and multiply it by the conversion factor, which is going to be pi over 180, since pi radians is 180 degrees. The degrees cancel out. That reduces to 3. So now we have pi over 3 radians. You can write radians, but this is actually the one time in math and science where you don't even need a unit. If you were to write pi over 3, it's assumed to be a radian. So you can have it there or not. Either way is fine. Next example, 150. So again, multiply it by pi over 180. We reduce everything by 30. So that's going to be 5 pi over 6, negative 45. Again, this is pretty repetitive once you know what to do. Multiply by pi over 180. You reduce it. That's negative pi over 4. And this one's interesting because it looks really hard, but you'll realize that nothing reduces, so just cross out your degrees and then you're done. 107 pi over 180. So in short, I'll put this in red, if you're converting from degrees to radians, simply multiply by pi over 180. And I'll 3D box that for you. So we know that's super important. Then you can write conversion tip. So our next part is going to be going the, uh, the opposite direction. So we have pi over 6 radians, so multiply by the reciprocal, 180 degrees over pi. And again, you can write radians, but it's not necessary. These cancel out. This reduces, your answer is 30 degrees. Next one, negative 3 pi over 4, multiply by 108 degrees over pi. The pi's cancel, we reduce that to 45, negative 135 degrees. Next one, 7 pi over 3, multiply by 180 over pi. Your pi's cancel, that reduces. 420 degrees. And this last one's interesting because it says three radians. So notice how there's no pi. That's okay. Just write your three there and multiply what you've been multiplying by. 180 over pi. Notice how nothing happens. You just get 540 degrees over pi. That is your answer. You have to remember that pi is just a number. It does not actually imply anything. A lot of people think that pi implies that it's a radian. That is not true. Pi is just a number. And that number, as you all know, is about 3.14. Okay, here's the next part. So now you're going to see an application of how a radian is often used. And this is going to be a very, very 
helpful thing for like SATs if you ever get a problem like this. So let's first look at the question here. Find the length of an arc of a circle. So I'll just draw it, draw a picture of what's happening. We have a circle, there's a radius of two meters and it's subtended by a central angle of 0.25 radians, which means this angle here is 0.25 radians. And we're looking for the length of this. So in your SAT class, they're gonna teach you to do this. You have to find the angle, but it's, you normally work in degrees in SAT. X over 360 and multiply it by your circumference. And that's how you get arc length. Now in trig, we can do something pretty cool. There's actually a really easy formula and it's this, S equals R theta. And it's really, really helpful, really, really simple. So just put a box around that. S is your arc length. R is obviously your radius. And this is your angle in radians. That's super important to understand. So really highlight that. It must be in radians to use this formula. So if you know this formula, look how trivial this becomes. S equals R theta. S equals R, which is two, times theta, which is 0.25 or a quarter. So your arc length is half a meter. So look how easy that is. Now, of course, we want to understand where this formula comes from. So what we're going to do is think about the SAT version. Think about this x over 360 multiplied by 2 pi over r. This is just the circumference. And x over 360 is like the proportion. So instead of writing x, I'm going to change this to theta. And if we're in radians, what happens is you change this 360 to 2 pi. Now look what happens. So 2 pi is cancel, and you're left with r theta. So look how cool that was. Really easy formula. Let's try it again. s equals r theta. s equals r is 6. Theta is 2. So you're done. s is 12 feet. So a really, really good arc length formula. Okay, next example. We're gonna find sector area. So again, I'll draw it for you. It says the radius is once again two. So I'll put two here. The angle is 30. Now sector area is referring to the inside, like this part. So we were just talking about arc length, which is like the crust of a pizza. Now we're talking about like the actual pizza slice. So again, the SAT version is you simply do X over 360 and multiply it by the area, which is pi r squared. Now the trig version is pretty cool. The trig version is gonna be one half r squared theta. So again, highlight this. This is what you'll use in the practice problems. It's a very nice formula. And look how easy it is, one half, r is two. But now here's a very common mistake. Some people are gonna plug in 30 degrees for theta. The reason you don't wanna do that is because this formula has a major assumption. Theta must be in radian. So that still stands here. So quickly convert that. So 30 degrees times pi over 180, cross cross, that's pi over six. So plug that in. And now we have some simple arithmetic. Half of four is two. So two times pi over six, that is pi over three. And your unit is feet squared because it's area. So look how easy that was. Now again, to derive that formula, you basically do the same thing. You would just do, I'll derive it for you right up here. Theta over two pi times pi r squared. 
that's how the pi is cancel and you get theta r squared over 2 which is the exact same thing okay so last example let's write the formula a equals 1 half r squared theta a equals 1 half 6 squared times 2 that would be 1 half times 36 times 2 answer is 36 feet squared now that we've done all the questions now i want you to finish the rest of the problems 